Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a differential equation. We have the second derivative of y equals x plus y, and we're going to be solving for the y values. I'll be presenting two methods, and let's start with the first one. Now for our first method, and we used this method before, I'm going to use substitution. And since we have x plus y on the right hand side, I would like to replace x plus y with z. Let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to call this z. So now I have x plus y equals z. And this means that if I differentiate both sides, I'm going to get, remember we're, I, we are differentiating everything with respect to x because y is a function of x. So when you add x to it, it's going to be a function of x, which we call z. So z is also a function of x. When we differentiate it, it's just going to be you know y prime or z prime. So the derivative of x with respect to x is just going to be 1. So it's going to be 1 plus y prime equals z prime. Since I have the second derivative on the left-hand side, I'm going to differentiate one more time. And the derivative of a constant is 0, so the derivative of 1 is 0. And the derivative of the first derivative is just going to be the second derivative. So this is going to be y double prime equals z double prime, which is really cool because now we can go ahead and replace y double prime with z prime. I mean z double prime. Okay, so that's the substitution. So let's go ahead and replace y double prime with z double prime and x plus y with z. And that's going to give us a very, very simple differential equation, like very simple, probably something that uh, if you were taking a differential equations class, you would probably learn about this first week of school. So to be able to solve this, I'm going to put a z on the left hand side. So it's going to be z double prime minus z is equal to zero. And by using the differential operator, which is the capital D, I can write this as d squared minus 1 y. Actually, that should be a z, not a y. So in other words, d squared just means take the second derivative, and 1 means don't do anything, kind of like a um, unit element, OK? All right. So the cool thing about writing this using the differential operator is we can come up with the and what is called the characteristic equation. The characteristic equation is basically uh, the equation you find by replacing uh, the d with another variable like r. So our characteristic equation is going to be r squared minus 1 equals 0. And from here, we're going to get two solutions, r equals 1 or r equals negative 1. Great. And with the given roots, depending on whether the roots are you know, real or complex. In this case, we have real roots. We can write the solution as, by using some constants as coefficients, c1 e to the power x plus c2 e to the power negative x. Now, the x and the negative x basically comes from uh, the numbers 1 and negative 1. So if the roots are r1 and r2 and they are real, then you can basically write the solution as c1 e to the power r1x plus c2 e to the power r2x. That's where the r1 and r2 or 1 and negative 1 uh, play a role. All right, so that's my solution, but that's only a solution for basically z, right? I do need to turn it into a solution for y, but we do know that z is equal to x plus y, right? That's what we assumed at the beginning, remember? We said that, hey, let z equal x plus y. Great. So now uh, we can just go ahead and isolate y from here. And y is going to be c1 e to the power x plus c2 e to the power negative x minus x. And that's basically going to be the solution to our equation. Of course, you can always uh, do the following. You can just differentiate this expression and test the solutions to make sure that it's actually a good practice because uh, what if you made a mistake, right? And when you check your work, hopefully uh, you'll find a mistake if you made any. So if you differentiate this function once, you're going to get c1 e to the power x. Uh, with the e to the power negative x from the chain rule, you're going to get a negative 1. So it's going to be negative c2 e to the power negative x. And the derivative of negative x is just going to be negative 1. This is y prime. 
And if you differentiate y prime, you're going to get y double prime, and that's going to be c1 e to the power x. Notice that that's unchanged, plus c2 e to the power negative x. The derivative of negative 1 is just going to be 0. Now, in the equation, we were given that y double prime is the same as x plus y. So let's see if that's true. Uh, if you add x plus y, you're going to get c1 e to the power x plus c2 e to the power negative x. And if you look at y double prime, you're going to see the same thing. Therefore, these two are equal and our solution checks. Awesome. Let's go ahead and take a look at the second method and see how it's different from the first one. For my second method, I'm going to approach this a little differently. I'm going to put everything that has y in it on the left-hand side and kind of write it as a, uh, on the left-hand side, kind of like a, a function of y. So there is no x term on the left-hand side. So all the coefficients are constant. And when we have variable constants like x times y double prime, it's a different story. You can use series, you can use variation of parameters, so on and so forth. There's different methods you can use. But with this one, it's fairly easy. This is a non-homogeneous equation because we have an x on the right hand side, but let's go ahead and solve the, the homogeneous equation first. So what is the, the homogeneous equation? It is y double prime minus y is equal to zero. And as you know, this is just the same equation that we were kind of dealing with, except it was the, uh, the z variable. So this equation is going to have solutions, we can call that yh for a homogeneous solution. We can write it as c1 e to the power x, because remember this was written as d squared minus 1, y0, and plus c2 e to the power x. Now e to the power negative x. So this is the solution to the homogeneous equation, but um, this equation is not homogeneous. We have an x on the right hand side. So we kind of have to come up with a particular solution, and I'm just going to assume that uh, our, my particular solution is going to be in this form. Since we have an x on the right hand side, I'm going to assume that it's a linear function and I can write it as I can write it as mx plus b. Okay? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these two together to get my general solution. By adding the particular solution to the homogeneous solution, you get the general solution. Let's go ahead and do that. So y equals y sub h plus y sub p, which is equal to c1 e to the power x plus c2 e to the power negative x plus mx plus b. Now, we, we kind of wrote our solution in a, general, uh, in a general form, but we still have to determine uh, the coefficients if possible. So for that purpose, I'm going to differentiate this and substitute. So let's go ahead and differentiate this once. I'm going to get c1 e to the x minus c2 e to the power negative x plus m. Let's differentiate one more time. c1 e to the x plus c2 e to the power negative x. That is the second derivative. And now we, we are going to uh, set this equal to x plus y. So let's go ahead and do that. Or um, you can kind of write it this way too. This From this, this is y double prime. From this, you can go ahead and subtract y, which is c1 e to the power x uh, and minus, what was y? Here we go. Uh, we're going to subtract this. c1 e to the x minus c2 e to the power negative x minus mx minus b. And then this should equal x, right? Because our non-homogeneous equation has x on the right-hand side. Great. So this is y double prime. This is y and then we get our equation. So this is where we substitute. Not here, because if you do substitute here, it's always going to work, obviously, right? Okay. Now, from here, what am I getting? These two terms cancel out, and these two terms also cancel out, leaving us with negative mx minus b equals x. From here, m becomes negative 1, and b becomes 0. Therefore, our a particular solution is going to be, remember, it was in the form of mx plus b. It is going to be negative x. And our general solution is going to be c1 e to the x plus c2 e to the power negative x plus the particular solution, which is negative x. And that is going to give us the general solution to this equation. And 
This brings us to the end of this video. I thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.